Hey guys, Brandon Barrett here today with you. We are out here in Southern Indiana on a beautiful day. You can see behind me, the leaves have changed. It's officially fall. And that means one thing, those deep fish have moved up shallow. They're up on the flats, they're in the backs of the pockets and the backs of the creeks, and they're chasing shad. And that's exactly where we are today. We are up here on a shallow flat. We've got some scattered vegetation out here. And there are a lot of really fun, cool ways to catch them this time of year. You can use chatter baits, you can use rattle traps, spinner baits, buzz baits, swim baits, whatever you want. Something that's moving that emulates a shad. And today, we're out here with driftwood baits, swim baits. And these swim baits come in a lot of different sizes. Uh, they come in five inch. Here's a five incher for you. That color is the sexy shad. They come in four inch, they come in, well, a couple different four inch sizes. They've got a three and a half inch size as well. And they got a three incher for the uh, Alabama rig, if you, wanna, if you wanna do that. So today, we've got the big four inch. And we're gonna toss this around this scattered vegetation and see if we can't get one to eat. So you can actually, as you throw this swim bait out there, you can actually look down the edge of this grass and you can see these shad just skipping. And that's kind of what I'm trying to emulate. I'm just tossing it out and winding it in. And with these swim baits, I have kind of learned that for the most part, you don't want to overwork them. Cast it out, reel it in, nice and easy. Swim bait's one of those do nothing baits, really. Toss it out, wind it in. You want it on the bottom, wind it nice and slow. You want it on the top, wind it faster. I've kind of found that a steady retrieve works best for me. That's what I like. Uh, seems like when I pop it and, you know, you it kind of goes against what we're taught with a lot of other baits as far as reaction type baits. You want to pop it and jerk it and make it erratic. I think with a swim bait, you want to cast it out, wind it in nice and steady. And then all of a sudden you're going to feel them. Pull and you got them. A little tip when you're fishing with a swim bait, this is a very visual kind of attack. You're looking for cleaner water. Not that they won't eat anything a little bit stained or dirtier water, but clean water is definitely where this bait shines. You want to look down and be able to see this bait at least six, ten inches plus. Something to look for, and you can see it right here in the early fall, which is what this is, is you've got a drain right there. You've got a ditch. And as those fall rains come in, it's washing in that cool water with those fresh nutrients, and that's what the shad are looking for. And the bass are just following their food. Something I really love about this driftwood swim bait compared to a lot of them, a lot of these swim baits, the way that they're designed, they're, and they're, there's a lot of really great swim baits out there, but this one, I can reel this one really fast on the surface, and it doesn't roll. Because a lot of times, you're watching these bait, this little, these shad out here, and they're flipping, and they're not moving slow. I mean, they're running. And so I'm trying to get this bait up here on the surface, and you can see that this thing just runs true. So we're back here in the back of a pocket. Again, clean water, scattered grass, flipping shad. You really can't, I mean, you really can't get a better recipe here for a swim bait. And you can see the shad jumping out there. It's the same size as the swim bait I've got on. It's just a matter of putting it in front of that hungry bass and she's going to eat it. And a lot of people think that a swim bait is this open water lure. It, get up there in the trees and throw it around laydowns and logs and stuff. Same place you'd put a spinner bait. It's got a hook on the top. They'll eat it. Throw it around stumps, throw it around all the same stuff you would throw everything else. Also in the fall, when you've got vegetation, a lot of it's dying off. Look for the green stuff. That green stuff's got 
oxygen, they like it more. It's just look for the green stuff. Let's talk rod and reel selection here for swim baits. For me, it's real simple on the reel. I'm going with the Lose Tournament Speed Spool, six to one, seven to one, probably toward, more towards the six to one. On the rod, for me, when it's when you've got the hook exposed like this, I'm going with the medium heavy. This is a seven three, probably, and it's just because I'm fishing it shallow. Probably want like a seven six medium heavy. If you've got it to where it's belly weighted and it's weedless, you're looking more towards the heavy action rod so you can really drive that that home. Um, but typically on those kind of the longer rods, you know, you're fishing it a little bit deeper. Um, for me right now, 7.3 medium heavy, tossing around these shallow, shallow flats around the scattered weeds and stuff. It's absolutely perfect. I think I've got a uh, seven to one rod here or a seven to one, seven, 0.5 to 1 gear ratio lose speed spool. So that's what you need. There it is. There it is. Right there. Right there. Right there. That is a wiper. That's what's in here. So as you can see, swim baits don't just catch largemouth or smallmouth. I also catch wipers. <laughs> Look at the size of this wiper. I am telling you, if you want to have a good time, grab you a driftwood swim bait and just toss it around. 